Now, we talked about consciousness and how it's correlated to the brain, the yin and yang energies, the left and right hemisphere of the neocortex, the human brain. Okay, And what I want to talk about now is what happens when one of these hemispheres is completely dominant over the other. How, how does the whole brain begin to function when that happens? Well, the neocortex, the whole upper brain, the whole human brain is like the executive controller. It's the, the command center of the whole three sub-brain complexes. Remember, you have the neocortex up at the top of the head, the new brain, the new cortex, neo meaning new. You have the limbic brain in the middle, it's the midbrain the mammal brain, and then at the base of the brain, you have the brain stem and the cerebellum, which is called the R complex, the reptile brain. So the neocortex, the top brain, okay, is like the CEO of the company. Let's look at it that way. Uh, this, he's the person that makes the executive decisions of the company. Now, if, if that part of the brain gets sick, or if it doesn't, isn't working properly, then the command functions of the whole brain complex, the three parts of the brain, have to be shunted to one of the other two brain complexes. So the, the executive functions are either going to go to the limbic brain, the midbrain, the mammal brain, or they're going to go to the lower brain, the R complex. So here's how this imbalance works. Here you see the three complexes of the brain the neocortex, the, the limbic brain, and the, the, the R complex, or the reptile brain. If we become extremely imbalanced to the left brain hemisphere, and this is how most people become imbalanced. There are, is a percentage that become very right brain imbalanced, but there is a, more of a tendency to become left brain imbalanced because of how our educational system is here in the, uh, the, the Western Hemisphere, the left brain becomes dominant, and what happens is the whole neocortex starts to not function properly, and this is the part of the brain that starts to shut down, the limbic brain. See, our emotions are more cultivated through a, a holistic um, um, uh, cohesiveness of both brain hemispheres, particularly when we start to get in touch with our right brain hemisphere. Okay? When you're only in the left, there's very little emotional or intuitive makeup within the person. So their limbic system actually begins to shut down. Their whole neocortex isn't functioning properly because of that imbalance. So the part of the brain that takes over is the reptile brain, the R complex, and the person begins beha behaving in reptile-like ways, controlling, dominating, hoarding, greed, um, external control over others. And we see this everywhere in our culture because these people's brains are in such a state of imbalance, in such a state of neurochemically, they're not operating properly. And the, the limbic brain has stopped functioning. The person is essentially cut off from their emotional guidance system of how they feel about what they do to others, and they become like a reptile because they're being ruled by the reptile brain. And they become cold-blooded. They don't care about what they're doing to anyone else. It's all about me. And it doesn't make a difference who I have to step on. That's what a person is thinking who is ruled by the reptile brain. doesn't matter if it's right or wrong. doesn't matter. It's only about how it relates to me. Now, the opposite of this is if the right brain becomes imbalanced, okay, which is a, more of a rarity, but it does happen, then the person, the neocortex shuts down again, They're not completely, but it's, it's not really functioning in, in, in the way it's intended as the executive, uh, the, fu the executive functions of the brain. And in this case, the person loses a lot of connection with the R complex of the brain. So they don't care about anything going on in the physical world. It doesn't matter if 
I'm living in a state of physical disarray. It doesn't matter if I, you know, have none of the basic necessities for survival. It doesn't matter if I'm being controlled externally from other people and my rights are being taken away or I'm being physically abused. See, because in that case, the mammalian brain, the limbic brain has gone kind of haywire and this person's being ruled by their emotional brain. You know, they don't have enough of the male tendencies because the feminine part of the brain has, has overtaken their consciousness and this person, their limbic system becomes the executive controller of the brain and they lose all connection with survival instincts and anything having to do with you know, living in the physical world. So somebody who's extremely imbalanced in religion or the new age movement perhaps, you know, excessively meditating let's say, this could be a way that the brain is imbalanced to the right hemisphere and then the person becomes ruled by the limbic brain, the mammalian brain. And ultimately, that's what is really going on. We have people's brains being de imbalanced and, and really being um, uh, put into a state of extreme unhealthiness through imbalance toward one brain hemisphere or another. Because when we get imbalanced toward the left brain, we, get, we become ruled by the R complex and we become dominators, masters. Okay? When we're ruled by the right brain, then we lose all connection with physical survival and don't care what happens to us anymore. We become ruled by our emotions and we become like slaves. So this is why this brain imbalance is really occurring. There's, there's a force out there that wants to create a world of masters and slaves, ultimately. They want the brain so imbalanced, it wants the brain so imbalanced that there's some people who are so left brain imbalanced they become dominating controllers, and some that become right brain imbalanced and they're willing to capitulate to any form of control that is thrust upon them. And ultimately, there's a little of both kinds of imbalance in most people and they become like a master and a slave simultaneously. You know, they, they, they uh, want to rule over whoever they can below them and then they'll take orders from, from whoever is above them in this hierarchy of control. So, this is an actual brain scan uh, taken from a science journal of um, what the brain looks like when it becomes heavily imbalanced. This isn't uh, physical holes in the brain over here. These are areas of electrochemical deadness. So there's no neural firing in, in the black parts of the brain, the real dark areas. This, this person's brain that's labeled normal here, it's a bit difficult to see on this slide, but this person's brain is, a, is in what's called global EEG coherence. Global brain coherence. The, the electrochemical activity is distributed equally uh, about both hemispheres of the neocortex. You're looking at the neocortex from underneath, this being the top of the brain here. So this is the front of the head, that's the back of the head. Okay? So that would make this the left brain hemisphere and this the right brain hemisphere, if you could visualize that. So look, picture it as if you... You're taking the brain and lifting it up like this. Here's my, my left side of my brain. I'm lifting it up like this. You're seeing it from underneath. So that's the left brain hemisphere. That's the right brain hemisphere. I'm sorry, it's backwards. This is the left brain hemisphere here, the left brain on that side, and that's the right. So if you tilted this down this way, that would be the front of the head. Okay. Now here, the brain is labeled violent because I'll tell you about uh, the, 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 the person, uh, the, the types of individuals that were scanned for these two images. This person um, did, uh, was not given a standard Western educational upbringing, did not watch a lot of television, did not eat a Western diet, meditated uh, a small amount on a daily basis, and they have global EEG coherence. This person was brought up in a Western educational system. They watched many hours of television a day, didn't really do a lot of reading, never meditated, ate a very Western 
fast food type diet and that's what their brain ended up looking like. Um, you can see that really the real damaged part, the real electrically dead part of the brain is right there on the right hemisphere, see, because they became like a controller and it's labeled violent. This person had violent tendencies and had problems, you know, behavioral issues and possibly, I'm not sure if it ended up in uh, problems with, uh, you know, uh, law, but um, uh, that's what a left brain imbalance neocortex ends up looking like. That person became very heavily left brain imbalanced, and you can see all the areas of electrochemical deadness of the brain. So that's what brain imbalance does to brain physiology. It's, it's measurable, it's provable. This is a type of scan that shows this type of imbalance, and this is called a PET scan. There's other, uh, even more advanced scans called SPECT scans that you can look into to show uh, the, the, uh, the neocortex and how um, brain uh, imbalance begins to affect the, uh, electro, uh, the electrochemical properties of the brain. So what we're really going to look at in part two is how this imbalance is at work in the world and how it's ultimately creating all of the problems that we see in, in manifestation in the outside world. And what we're seeing is this, that consciousness is ultimately being torn apart in most people by the imbalance to the male energy. And it is the suppression of emotions, the sacred feminine, the Holy Spirit, the Divine Mother, the feminine aspect of consciousness, our emotions, that is really what is driving this. That, that, that our emotions are being so numbed, kept down, ignored, and ultimately killed. The sacred feminine is being killed in our world, and that's our emotional aspect of consciousness. And when that happens, the yang energy begins to dominate because we're out of touch with the feminine aspect of ourselves, the intuitive, compassionate side of who we are. And we're, we're being ruled by this yang energy, the male dominator principle of energy. When, in fact, what we need to do is unite these and help them to come into equilibrium and exist harmoniously in all individuals. That's the ultimate goal. So this is a painting by the artist Alex Gray, uh, a great spiritual artist. This is my favorite painting by him called Gaia. It's the last slide of part one. And in here he brilliantly depicts what happens when we uh, lose touch with the right brain side of ourselves. If you imagine yourself as the world tree that he's painting in this image, this would be the right brain, that would be the left brain. Okay, You're facing this way. And he shows but with uh, the, the total imbalance to the left brain, the world is on fire, there's pollution, the, there's uh, you know, smog in the sky, there's rivers of blood, um, the, the tree is completely sick, and uh, it's just utter chaos. But if we get in touch with our right brain hemisphere, and we unite the brain hemispheres, then we can build a world like this, of peace, nature, and harmony, blue skies, sun ruling the sky. And uh, it's just a great depiction of, uh, you know, what uh, going into certain modalities of consciousness through the left and right brain can bring into manifestation in the world. And that's why I think it's a, uh, a great painting by a great artist and it's a great place to end part one. And in part two, we will look at what happens uh, when this type of brain imbalance comes into fruition in our world, and that's exactly what has happened. And we'll talk about the forces that are driving that imbalance, that left brain imbalance, and um, ultimately holding conscious, the consciousness of this planet where it currently is, because they benefit from it being held there. And we'll talk about what those forces are 
and we'll talk about how they operate to accomplish this uh, imbalance within consciousness. That's the end of part one. Be back for part two.